like the applause. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So we have more people coming probably later tonight because Marisa is giving one class, you know, in the back room. So Marisa's classes usually take a little longer <laughs> than usual, right? So tonight we're going to talk, well, first of all, good evening again. Uh, good evening, our friends, our online viewers as well. And we're going to talk about Blessed Are the Poor in Spirit, which is the chapter, which chapter? Four? Seven. Is it? Yeah, the chapter seven. All right? In the gospel, according to the Spiritism. So we have the... I brought to you guys this Blessed Are the Poor in Spirit. This is the way that Jesus, you know, uh, said in the Sermon of the Mount. Everybody knows that. So he said, Blessed are the poor in the spirits, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It is in Matthew, all right, 5, 3. There you go, the gospel according to spiritism. So to start with, I got to confess that there are little things in the gospel that, you know, sometimes it catches my attention because I don't understand. I completely sometimes don't get it. And, they, and I think, you know, it's, I mean, it might happen, you know, to other people, of course. I just don't get it sometimes. And then the, the, the poor in the spirit is one, it was one of them. And then it was like, okay, I'm going to go research about this thing because I need to learn, right? And whatever makes me think, bam, question mark, I got to go after it. And that's the best part. That's the beauty of it. So we go after the knowledge. And then we get to know things. And then we're going to start learning and learning. And then it doesn't stop. That's the best thing. Because it doesn't stop. So we go for one subject, for one chapter of the, of the gospel. To talk about one beatitude. And then we kind of ending, like knowing a bunch of things around Things that you get in touch with, things that we already know in a way that we thought that we knew and we didn't. So we go after it and then we, we just realize that we don't know anything. Isn't that beautiful? It is. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this chapter, in this, with this beatitude, the blessed of the poor in the spirit, that we are nothing. We are nothing. We don't know anything that we think we know, that we think we are aware of. No. No, we don't know anything. We are nothing. So because of that, and I always bring to my, uh, especially the English lectures that I do, I always bring my friend, Socrates, right? Because this thing is the best and the most important thing for, the, for us spirits, imperfect spirits. The know thyself which Socrates brought us, like, you know, back in antiquity, in the antiquity. And it is uh, in the book, in the Spiritist book as well. Question. I'm not like the Artu or Adodu that, you know, remembers all the questions and numbers, but I guess it's 9, 919. Nobody's going to go after it and see if I'm right or wrong? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but that's the, that, that's the most important thing, because that's the, where everything starts. That's where I think everything starts. So the know thyself. So we have to get to know ourselves in order to reach something else. So in order to reach anything or everything that we need, that we are willing for as a spirit, it's going to start inside of us. Inside. You know, to know exactly how we feel, how we think, how our love, uh, our heart is or how we connect with things. Every single thing about ourselves we have to know, our limitations, our flaws, uh, everything, everything. So that way we know exactly how we're going to step foot ahead of us, how we're going to do the next step, how we're going to make the next thing happen to us in our lives. So this is the start of everything. So I always bring, you know, my friend Socrates. I. I don't know, maybe I was like a student of his, uh, maybe, I don't know, 
So believing in, in reincarnation, we might, right? So I brought you guys Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, and he says, when your country, in one of his sayings, you know, the, that's, that's the one that he, um, he mentions the Sermon of, the, of, you know, on the mountain. When your country and mine shall get together on the teachings laid down by Jesus, and he mentioned Jesus in this Sermon on the Mount, we shall have solved the problems not only of our countries, but those of the whole world. So Gandhi mentions Jesus, and he wasn't like a Christian, of course, right? But he mentions because he recognizes, and he recognized in Jesus, in this say, in the Sermon of the Mountain, exactly the teachings that every single one, every single spirit needs, every single spirit needs in order to go ahead and, you know, evolve, right? And walk towards God. So to start with, I brought the dictionary. Uh, no, I didn't, but the dictionary comes after. So who is the poor in spirit based on the gospel? All right, and that, that was the question that I was like, what is this poor in spirit? What is the meaning of it? I have to know that thing. Because I couldn't understand poor in spirit. What is it, poor in spirit? If I'm poor in spirit, how come am I gonna be the, I mean, God's chosen one? How, how is that thing happening that I don't get it? And that's because when Jesus says, who, I mean, poor in spirit, they're not the persons devoid of material things, okay? Jesus meant the ones who are missing the spiritual side of life, the simple ones, the humble ones, the ignorant persons, because they have more to learn from God. And then it's gonna be directly connected to proud, to selfish, that we're gonna talk later on. Okay, they are also not the persons devoid of intelligence. Besides, they they are being ignorant. It doesn't mean that they are devoid of intelligence. Okay, we're talking about ignorance in the spiritual life. So Jesus really meant the humble ones, those who are really uh, simple in spirit. Because the usually, and he says, usually the, the most intelligent ones are the ones who think they are intelligent more than, you know, everybody else. They don't have a space inside themselves for God because they think there is nothing above because I am the master of everything. Sometimes I think I'm the master of everything in everything as well and it's not like that because god is above us and then we have something bigger than us thinking bigger about us to us for us sometimes you know and then the ones who doesn't believe this are not the ones that are going to be chosen in this specific beatitude chosen by god you know for the kingdom of heaven of heaven like Matthew said. You got it? It's the spiritual part of it. So we are ignorant in the spiritual way of us, and then we are humble enough to ask for anyone to teach us about it. And this is the most important part. So we are humble enough to ask, not to find ourselves uh, self uh, uh, how do we say that, completing myself, self-sufficient, you know? Because I am not. Because at the moment that I think that I am self-sufficient, that's it. You're not. Remember when, when Jesus says, and I think I'm going to bring, I have to go slide by slide because, you know, I, I tend to start talking and, and that's it. And I don't go with the slides. That's, that's my way to do it. Sometimes I'm giving classes and then the one slide and then I'm already like well, now we're and a half talking and talking and one slide going on. 
But anyway, when Jesus, uh, and he says about, and I brought the gospel because of that, when he says, and everyone knows that, right? I'm going to give you this. Uh, the time who Jesus having called to a child. Remember that? That Jesus have called to a child, set him in their midst, and said to them, Verily I say to you that if you do not convert and if you do not become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Why did he say that? Because he's like, he, he liked children a lot, the kids a lot. I was going to be cute because I don't like them much. You know, they keep running around and noisy and this stuff. But, you know, besides that, I mean, I'm just kidding. Why he mentioned the kids, the children, for everyone to become like the children? Because they are innocent, because they are pure, because they, they have no, no selfishness inside of them. They can say whatever they think. They can ask if they don't know, they're going to do like that. And that's exactly where he point the children for us to become children. Because there always be, there always be, we will always be the, the, the God above us, right? So parents here know what I'm talking about, right? Because kids sometimes they embarrass us, of course. And we know that, right? Because they are so innocent that they come up with questions in front of everyone, and then we are not like children. We kind of embarrass ourselves. And we're like, shush, 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 for God's sake. <laughs> Don't do this, right? So when we say humble ones, as Jesus said, we talk in humility of the spirit, as I said. Like Jesus understood the, por the pores of in the spirit. And humility is the first virtue to be conquered by us, so that we, can, we gotta go after that would be humility. And in the other hand, where do we go? Which direction, direction do, we go, do we go first? When we get this kingdom of uh, the matter, let's say, the kingdom of the flesh, the material, where do we go? We go to the pride, the selfishness, thinking about the kingdom of the material things that we, as more as we have, as more as we conquer, more we're going to be in the highs, more we're going to be important, right? And this is the kingdom of the matter, of the flesh, of the material things. And then when Jesus says the kingdom of heaven, so we kind of have two directions, and then Jesus and God and pointing us the direction, okay, go this way, and then we go in that way. And then he goes there and he says, if Stop in front of us and no, you gotta go this way. And then you say, No, get out of there. I've gotta go that way. And then of course it's it's it is a matter of you know our will. <coughs> and it is a matter of ourselves learning in our time. Of course, in our time. Right? Because God is so merciful that He is going to do, okay, let it be. Because he's going to learn. Because sooner or later, he will open, you know, his eyes and see something. And he's going to wait for us. And he's not going to judge us. No matter how long it takes for us to get there. No matter how long it takes for us to open our eyes and, and see the right direction to go for. No matter how long it takes for us to understand the poor in the spirit, this sentence, that to me took me like, you know, forever to understand anyway. But he's there. He's going to be there for us because he's merciful. And so the spirits, our friends, they are merciful as well. They're going to, you know, keep themselves there waiting for us, waiting, just waiting for us. To open our eyes and really, okay, I see now. You were there, right? For so long. Oh, some decades maybe. <laughs> Waiting for you to say hello to me. That's the way the spirits, you know, work. They stay with us all the time. Just waiting for us to open our eyes. Or, you know, ears, right? 
So that's why humility, we have to go, um, and uh, if we are, if we have the pride as our main um, feeling, I would say, if we have the selfishness working upon us more than anything else, and it could be more than anything else, and it could be in the little things as well, we have to get rid of those things. And that's why we are in this path of evolution. And in reincarnation, by incarnation by incarnation, coming back all the time so we can go for, we can go through it and we can learn throughout the experiences that we go in this lives and lives and lives that we keep, you know, coming back for. Besides that, we come back for with the persons, right? With the people that we are usually connected and then of course, because we have to learn with them anyway, and we have to give to them anyway as well, right? So humility is the first virtue to be conquered by us because the humili humility opens up the doors and the possibilities to learn. And that's the exact meaning of the poor in the spirit because only the humility, only the humbleness is gonna open up the doors for us to learn something because then knowing or acknowledging that I don't know anything I'm going to have to go after, and then I'm going to have to ask for something, right? It is the base of everything. Without humility, we cannot conquer anything, because we're not going to know how to. Jesus, sometimes it happens, and then sometimes we say, oh, but I know already a little bit. But I know already, like, you know, uh, something about the spiritism. I know we go to classes and then we do have these, you know, little thing here, here and there about the incarnation, about reincarnation process and this and that. Yes, because, because one day, I don't know when for, you know, each one of us, because one day we woke up and then we said, I need something else. I need more. Where am I going to find something else that explains to me other things beyond whatever I think I know now. And then we think, if we are selfish enough and pride enough, we think, no, I'm not asking God, I'm not asking anybody else, I'm just, I just want to learn by myself. I just want to learn. And then we forget that a bunch of spirits and friends are behind us, surrounding us, helping us to wake up and ask ourselves, because that's the only way I know till now, and ask myself to go for something else, right? Because if that's the way I think now, if I'm selfish enough to know that I am, you know, the one who is going to go after something because of my only will and nothing else, okay, the spirituality is gonna work with us in this. Don't worry, let him think. Let her think that she's the one looking for, don't worry about it. Because I don't need any merit, I don't need any titles, I don't need anything. Nobody needs to know that I'm, as a spirit, am helping, you know, anybody else. No, because the spirits, they don't need that. They have this knowledge already, in a way. So, let them think that they go in this path, you know, onto this path, by their own. Don't worry. At least, they are learning something else, right? So it is the base of everything. And even if we don't know or even if we don't accept or think that we are being humble, because we don't know that, sometimes we are. And we're going to learn that we are exercising, practicing humbleness as well. Okay? So Jesus places humility in the category of virtues that bring us closer to God. That's why Matthew says, for theirs will be the kingdom of heaven, right? So just a little example here, when Matthew was there, it, it is in the chapter 11, the Sermon of the Mount, in this book, Boa Nova, Chico Xavier, Matthew was amazed at the cripples and beggars who came to him. So remember this passage when Jesus says, okay, you guys stay here, the, 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 the disciples, you guys stay here, I'm gonna go for something, 
Of course, I'm telling this way because it's simpler, right? And then, uh, it's me talking, of course. I'm going to go do something else. So you stay here and you guys, please welcome everyone. Okay? Get everyone together. So we're going to talk tonight. So stay here and welcome everyone. And then, of course, we got those three, the cripple, you know, the, the beggars, the, the, because they were like, you know, uh, dirty and, you know, um, full of, you know, not good odors, let's, <laughs> let, as we say. And then Matthew was amazed by the cripples and beggars who came to him. And then he said, no, you guys stay away far, stay there, because, you know, in his mind, he was like, what, what are we going to do with this? What are we going to do with those people? We need people like strong, you know, to build up the kingdom of heaven, right? And then when Jesus came back, and Jesus says, okay, what happened to those three? No, because, you know, what are we going to do with those guys? They don't do anything. They cannot do anything, right? And then Jesus says, we must love and accept the precious, the precious collaboration of the defeated of the world. All the defeated ones. The winners on, of the earth do not need good news because they think they have everything. Because they leave this... I got everything, I conquered everything. So the needy ones are the ones who are going to look for us, poor in spirit, remember? They're going to look for us because they have nothing. The ones who are in absence of luck can hear God more than the others. Isn't it that way? When we have everything, we don't need to have everything. When we have a little bit, we already forget God. We already forget about the other things. I'm not saying in general, of course. I'm not. No. Of course, we have uh, many different people around and surrounding us and among us. But anyway, when we have a little bit of this, when we are, okay, I have the money to pay this, to buy a car, to do that, blah, 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 all the material things. Okay, where is God? Where is myself, where I am at in this place? In my connection with God, we kind of lose connection. We know that. It's very easy for us to lose connection. It's like the weakest Wi-Fi ever are us. We have the weakest Wi-Fi ever. Like whatever, whichever the company, the Wi-Fi company that we you know, use for, we have the weakest one. It's not Comcast. Oh, Comcast. Comcast is bad. No, let's not talk Comcast. <laughs> but anyway, anyone. Because, because we have this, you know, this, uh, it's kind of a habit that when we have uh, things that we need, we kind of forget. And when we don't have it, when we are in despair, then we remember to connect with God, with the spirits. Then I'm going to go to the spirits center to to get a healing pass, because I need it, because today I'm feeling so bad, because today I'm not feeling well, because I need something that, you know, uh, calms my, my interior, my mind, so I can think about a way to pay my bills tomorrow. So I'm going to go to the spiritual center tonight. Unfortunately, for, you know, many of us, that's the way it happens. And fortunately, the spirits are here to help us in this way as well. Because for them, as we said, there is no distinction among the pains or the illnesses or anything that we go through. Because everyone, every single one is equal, right? In front of God. Get it? So Jesus said, the ones in absence of luck on earth are the ones who are going to hear God better. And it is true. And those are the poor in spirits, in the spirit as well. So that's why humility is so important. In the book of spirits, is in question 803, it is there. Are all the people equal before God? And then, of course, the spirits, they respond yes. All tend towards the same goal. And God made divine laws for everybody. 
you often say that the sun shines on everyone, right? We say that. And you thereby state a greater and more general truth than you might think. So it's a simple thing that I say, oh, don't worry, because, you know, sun's going to shine because sun shines for everyone. Yes, sun shines for everyone. God is here for everyone, for each one of us. That's why we need to learn how to ask, how to be humble enough to ask. That's the trick of it. I'm not going to be ashamed of asking for charity, for a friendship, for an advice. I cannot be ashamed of my flaws, of my weaknesses. Because they are in me. They are mine. They are from my spirit, my imperfect spirit. So they are mine. And I need help to solve them, to bring this light upon you know, those things and try to do better every time. So who will help us if we don't ask for help? Sometimes it's difficult because we ask for help and nobody helps. Right? So that's what it is. And then in this book, Pensamento e Vida, all right, Emmanuel says, says, without the reflection of humility, God's attribute in the kingdom of the self, the creature feels like being the only proprietor, pro proprietor of the goods surrounding it. So we think we own everything around us, right? Ignorant of its temporary condition in the matter. Because we're here, and it is temporary, because we're going to die. I'm sorry. Everyone knew that? <laughs> Everyone okay with that? We are going to die. So it is temporary. Nothing that we have now is really ours. We kind of, you know, we kind of just uh, got it, you know, from God or kind of a, you know, we, okay, let me lend these things. Let me give you this and get that. So we kind of living with those things, but they are not ours for sure, because in the next reincarnation, we're going to get different things anyway, depending on our evolution, right? So converts the soul into the fortress of illusions. That's what we do, based on this, these things that we think we know and that we own. So we convert these things in this fortress, this castle of illusions, in which we, the spirits, refuse contact with the fundamental realities of life, which is the spiritual life. So we kind of live in this material, physical world that we are now, forgetting the main thing, the main goal, which is learning. Not having, but learning. And then, of course, that's why humility has everything to do with this. Because we don't have anything. So when we don't have anything, we go for what? We go asking for the things. If I'm hungry and I don't have any way to eat anything, what am I going to do? Ask for food. Oh, but how come I'm going to ask for food? I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to ask for this. I'm not going to do this for sure because, you know, I'm going to really humiliate myself, right? But if you're really hungry, you will do it. No, before I do that, listen to it. Listen to it. Because we are, we have this pride inside of us and we don't even know it. Before I do it, before I ask, I can be hungry, but before I ask, I'm going to go for the trash can and look for food over there before I have to ask anyone for help. It happens. It happens. And it would be, be so much easier to ask 
for anyone for food. How many times? Because the first one probably is not going to give us. Because he's also selfish. Because we all are, in a way, right? And we don't know if we are. Everyone, everyone else can be and have the right to be anyway, right? So it's not going to be the first person that I'm going to ask that is going to help me. Okay, but the second, but the third, but the fourth, but the fifth, but the whoever. Okay, I asked like 195 persons and they didn't help me and I'm starving now. And I'm not going to ask anyone else because I'm going to die now because I don't have the forces to. Okay, maybe a dog comes to you with something. And, and sometimes we eat, that we have everything, we think, oh no, come on. But yes, if I'm hungry, if I'm starving, yes, I need that. I need that. And that's, if we get this situation and we just put this situation in the spiritual way of it, that's exactly what is happening to ourselves right now. We are starving for this spiritual life. And then we need to ask more and more and more to be able to get more and more and more to be able to get the spirits to help us and give us the knowledge, the lessons, or whatever we need. We may don't know that we need, yes, but we need. We are starving for it, all right? Arodu, Dutra, and everybody knows Arodu, he says, needy and blessed. Because the happy for the gospel is the one who perceives himself poor. The beauty of the universe is to become small. Luz Imperecível, another book, Honorio de Abreu. The beauty of the universe is to become small. Remember the children that Jesus said? So we don't, we're, not, we're not creating anything. We, not, we are not inventing the will. Because somebody else already did it for us. We're just repeating ourselves all the time. You got that? Jesus said, okay, you got to become like, small like the children so you guys can come to the kingdom of heaven. And then comes another job. Okay, the beauty of the universe is to become small. And then somebody else is going to say something else. In another lecture that you guys are going to you know, sit down here and, and, and listen to it. And then it, somebody else, some other person is going to come up here and say the same thing in different ways and different words. Perfect. That's the way it is because that's the way we learn. Because my situation tonight is one. And then I might be like saying things that is not going to touch everyone's hearts. One or two, if I'm lucky. Okay? Because it's not the moment. Because I'm not ready for it. Right? And that's the fantastic thing is when we, we are ready and we feel that we are ready and then we know that we are ready and everything that we listen to comes to us like, oh my God, that's, the, that's all the food that I need. And it's filling me up. And then now I feel like, you know, I'm not hungry anymore. But tomorrow we're going to be hungry again, right? And then we're going to need more again. Right? So, in the Gospel according to Spiritism, the same chapter 7 is exactly where they say, Therefore, everyone who humbles himself and becomes small like this child will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Right? In the Gospel, it says that all the Dutra, the poor in spirit are the humble. Those who look within and feel the weight and extent of their, their own, own needs for renewal. Those are the ones who always recognize themselves in need of the spiritual values. So we need to recognize ourselves as the needy ones in the spiritual values. We cannot, unfortunately, we cannot anymore come to the spiritual center or go to any church or any place or whatever you do. It doesn't matter. It's not a religion thing. Okay? But we cannot do this anymore like just because I need... Uh, something right now. 
at this moment, to feel better at this moment. No, it's a work of art. We have a lot of work to do with ourselves. And the healing path that we go there and receive from the spirits and from the workers, you know, over there, it's not the thing that is going to cure ourselves of everything if we don't have the will to it. It's going to give us something, some relief maybe, yes. But if we want more, it's going to open up our minds. It's not gonna, it's not gonna even do something with our pain at the moment, but it's gonna open up our minds if we are ready for. And if we are ready for it, that's the magic of it. Because the pain is gonna go away. Because I'm gonna learn how to deal with that. How to deal with the situation or the thing that it's giving me that pain. You see? It's a learning process. There is no way out. Again, there's no way out. Okay, I'm not going to learn this life. All right, you're going to have the next one or the next ones. But I can see myself living like many different lives every day if I want. Because I can die tonight. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to die. I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning. I'm going to reborn. Brand new, if I want. Brand new. Yeah, right? So 24 hours is a long life. So we have enough time to do a bunch of transformations inside ourselves in 24 hours. Yes, that's true. That's true. If we think that way, that's true. All right? So we have this thing about humility that we're talking about. I'm going to bring you guys this. Oops, where is it? Okay, humility to detach from material goods. Humility to need the work and learn to ask for. And humility to serve after the first two steps. Because everything we learn, everything we get, we got to give it away. Because that's exactly what moves energy. So I'm going to detach myself from the material things. Of course, I'm not talking about, oh, I'm going to give everything away, my fortune, you know, away. Fortune that I don't have, by the way. But I'm not going to give my fortune, and then I'm going to go and, and live in the forest. No, it's not that. we got to work with our material, you know, uh, substance that we have if we can say that. Because if we have things, material things, we have to use them for those things to help, to learn, to give opportunities to anybody else, to do the work God wants us to do, to do the work we were like, you know, put in here to do when we first reincarnated in this life. So we have goals, we have things to do, and humility is going to bring us to the right path, to the right direction, right? In the book, The Way, The Truth, and The Life, Emmanuel clarifies to us, humility is independence, inner freedom that rises from the depths of the spirit. And it is true. Because humility is going to free us is going to give us the libertation. It's going to send us away, far away from the material things, from this vision or this feeling that we have that we don't need anything, right? To cultivate humility, it is to move forward without holding yourself back. It is to project the best of oneself on the ways of the world, the real ways of the world, all right? And then I brought this figure because it's the, I guess it is the lighter living creature that we can, I could think of, right? And that's the way we have to be, light. We have to be this way. We have to be able to go anywhere. Our minds, they have to be able to go anywhere like this. If we want to help, 
We think of the person we want to help, and then we're there. We are right there helping at that time. And then we don't need to go physically to the place that person is and bring material things for, to that person. Of course, it's going to help, yes. But it, if we are spirits and we are in this right path, if we think, we are there. If we are there, we can help with our thoughts. It's already changing everything, all the psychosphere, you know, surrounding that person. That's really important. That's the power of thoughts, I would say. So, humility is to have conscience of our, your qualities, but recognize we also have many defects, right? Humility is to show the talents without wanting to smoother the talents of others because everyone is equal, right? Is that what we said in the Book of the Spirits also, also said? Humility is to give opinion with the same willingness to listen to the opinion of others. Little sentences, kind of recipe on how to get humble if we can follow these directions, which I don't think we can follow every single one of them, but you know, some of them we can try, right? Humility is to, it is knowing how to recognize that others may be right and we may be wrong. That's difficult. That's difficult, right? That really difficult. Got it? Yeah. It is to admire others for what they do without forgetting that you are also capable to do wonderful things. Not putting yourself behind just because others do beautiful things. We can do beautiful things, wonderful things as well. Maybe not in the same area, in the same place, but different places, right? It is accepting important positions, but not only accepting, but to make them a way to serve even more. So this is consciousness, right? We have to be conscious all the time anyway. It is helping those who are in need without thinking of thanks. Why am I, am I going to do something just because I want people to thank me about it or for things I did? Because sometimes we are like that. Oh, I did. I gave him like, you know, a plate of food. But not even a thank you, a thank you. The guy just, you know, vanished in front of me. Of course, the guy was hungry. Come on, the guy was hungry. He wants to eat. He was going to think about, you know, thanking you before. Thank you. No, he wants to eat. So we have to be able to understand that. We have to be able to put ourselves in, you know, other people's shoes. To know exactly how would I act if. And then... Then he goes, you're going to be able to not wait for thanks or anything, right? It is learning to live without the differences, of course, because at the same time that we are equal, you know, we are different spirits, individual spirits, with our stories, with everything that happened to us that it, we made, hap made happen in our lives, different lives that we had. It is knowing how to live in simplicity without feeling superior to those who are attached to things. So sometimes, okay, I know how to live in simplicity because I don't have anything or, you know, I just let go. And now I know. And then we start judging the other one because he doesn't do whatever we were able to do. So what are we doing? No. You just do your part. You do because you want to do. I do because I want to do. And then the others their responsibilities, not mine. I'm not going to think about them because if I'm thinking about them, I'm not doing my job. Easy like that, right? And then we have the pride that we're going to go because we talked about pride already anyway. And in the dictionary, pride is the feeling of personal dignity, haughtiness, and high or exaggerated concept of himself. So sometimes we have this. Sometimes, like, you know, they has 24 hours. Sometimes we have, like, 18 hours, maybe, thinking like that. <laughs> spiritism, in the spiritism, pride is a spiritual imperfection that shows an absence of humility 
because it, it is exactly the opposite way, right? We have humility and we have pride. Pride opposes humility. So pride, it is an exaggeration of self-worth as being an opinion we have about ourselves that does not match our inner reality. So I think I am, but deep inside, I know I am not. But I'm not gonna say out loud because nobody can hear, no need for them to hear that. I know I'm not good enough, but I think I am good enough, and I think I'm gonna do these things, and I'm gonna make people think that I'm good enough. And then, when I get back home, I'm gonna suffer at night, because you know I didn't do anything that I should, the way I should, the way I wanted to, right? It happens. And humility, it is the exaltation of the spirit and pride is the exaltation of the personality. So we have two things, the ego and the spirit, the self and the spirit. What is the most, which one is the most important one? The spirit. So why are we exalting the personality in so many ways if the most important thing is our spirit, the way we have to live our, as the spirits, right? Based on social and material positions, based on intellectual possibilities, forgetting the limitation of material life, that we can change our lives in every way throughout reincarnations, as we said. Since reincarnation is the law of God and his way to teach us. So when I say, okay, we have many reincarnations as we speak here, because if I'm gonna live like 80 years throughout my life, my, this reincarnation, how many days I'm gonna have to live through. You can make the math. It's gonna be the how many lives you're gonna have the possibility to change yourself. Day by day we can change ourselves. If we wanna look this way, we're gonna wake up tomorrow morning totally different because we're gonna think about this and I'm gonna say, okay, God, gave me one more day so it's one more incarnation that I can do better than I did yesterday. Who am I going to forgive today? Who am I going to ask for charity today? And overcoming day by day our difficulties, the obstacles, the pride, the selfishness, day by day. This is one incarnation made of a bunch of small incarnations day by day. And then we have chances among chances, and then we can do whatever we want if we keep our mind focused in this, in this evolution process in this way to evolve to go for whatever we believe that we can connect with God right being humble don't forget <laughs> so here we have Arodo again he says that pride about pride and that's really interesting the same energy that it is at the base that sustains the most proud creature it is the energy that it is at the base of a creature that gives the greatest examples of humility. It is the same energy, the same forces, the same thing. What is the difference between those two? The way with this energy is administered, is addressed. The way I direct, the way I address my energy is what counts in the end of the day that direction or that direction, matter or spiritual, right? To educate, to address, to control the intensity of it. And it's still what Odo brings us about pride. Our potentials turn into addiction when they are in the wrong intensity for less or for more. Our potentials, things that we have inside, they become addiction vices when they are in the wrong intensity for less or more or the wrong direction 
and when they do not have the correct address, as I said, or orientation, the spirit must maintain a state of eternal vigilance over his faculties and his potentials. Have you guys ever heard about watch and pray? Am I saying anything brand new here? Am I inventing the wheel here? Neither at all, do. <laughs> because he said that, not me. So, watch and pray is that we have to be spirits because we are spirits all the time, all day long, all night long. Because we are in the matter, but we are spirits for real. That we have to do things as spirits, looking for the evolution that I want, the place that I want to be tomorrow. Tomorrow, not next life. Tomorrow. You see? What is the place that I want to be tomorrow? So I'm going to do the effort now to be at that place tomorrow. And my tomorrow can come like, you know, next week. That's okay. It's the time. Time is, you know, I can do the time whatever I want with the time. I can, I can reinvent time if I want. Right? So the spirit doctrine teaches that our errors are temporary as well, because we are in this learning process. That the one who is mistaken today will also reach perfection like any of us. And of course, that's the most you know, truth about everything. And the doctrine, the, spirits, the spiritist doctrine among all the books, you know, the basic ones or not, are going to teach us this thing. We are in this evolution process, learning process. We are, we are going to become perfect but we're not going to stop working, right? We're not going to stop doing this. Brought you guys Sefer Jalus, chapter 5. Okay, Emmanuel again says, Let us fight the enemies of our peace, hidden in our own self in the form of pride and intemperance and selfishness and animality, our enemies. This is the only road Fighting these enemies, this is the only road susceptible to lead us to the definitive empire of the great light. So we know who our enemies are. If we look deep inside ourselves, we know our flaws. We know where we are weak, where we need work. We know. So we got to be humble. We got to have this... Um, walk this humility, this path of humility so we can fight these enemies. If I cannot do myself, let's beg for help if it's necessary. Let's beg for help. Like the beggars back then when Jesus said, because when we beg, when we are the beggars, when we become the beggars, we can hear God. Remember he said? Again, not reinventing anything here, right? So pride is the cataract that makes you blind. We are blind by the pride, for sure. What good is it to present the light to a blind man? Because he's not going to see anything. He's blind, right? It is necessary to destroy the cause of evil. Then God, the skilled physician of the spirit, will follow to correct the pride. So we need to work together in this thing. But we, need, we really need to do the effort to get there. Because it has to come from us before. I want to change. I want to do it. I want to be the poor in the spirit. I want to recognize in myself the humbleness, my will to enter the kingdom of heaven. Right? So, besides that, humility is the key of our freedom. Be generous and charitable without ostentation, meaning do good with humility. May each and any one proceed little by little to the, to the demolition of the altars which all of us have raised to pride. Altars that we raised. Altars that we have to start 
the demolition of them, to start destroying them. Because that way we can reach something else. It's like a wall, right? It is really like a wall. I'm behind the wall that I, I am myself built, right? So what am I seeing behind that wall? Nothing, because the wall is in front of me, so I'm blind. The wall of pride. So I'm blind, I'm not seeing anything. But I need to do something, I need to see something else. I know there is something else behind the wall. What am I gonna do? What do I have to do in order to see now something that I knew and I know that it is behind the wall? Because when I was building up the wall, I knew there was something there that I didn't want to see back in time. What am I going to do? Okay, you have to destroy the wall. Oh, shoot. Really? I do? I do? I have to do the effort to destroy the wall? But I really built this wall up strong. <laughs> because I did a one back in time to see anything else. So it's like four or five layers of concrete. Okay, do it. Start doing the job because you know as sooner as you do, sooner you're gonna get to see whatever is behind the wall, right? So we're gonna have to do it. We're gonna have to do it so we get freedom and we can see things, right? So bring us again how to learn or develop humility. There he goes, my, our friend. You see, 919, I was right. Now I got it. So here comes again. Our friend, the spirit says, what is the mo uh, Kardec asks, what is the most effective means for improving ourselves in this life and for resisting the draw of evil? To develop and learn humility. And then, of course, we know the, the answer, right? The answer is know thyself, as we know already. And that's why I like to bring, I always like to bring Socrates because this thing is the, the lesson. If we go back home with this lesson in our minds, forget about the rest. Forget about everything I said. Don't worry, no, no, no worries, no problem, but know thyself. Okay, I'm gonna sleep, I'm gonna put my head you know, in my pillow tonight, just spirits, allow me to know myself, please. Help me to know myself. That's the way, and what is that? Asking for help. So what is that? What are you being? Humble enough to ask for help. That's what pray is. It's simple. It is simple. It doesn't hurt to ask. It really doesn't hurt. So just to finish up and wrap this thing, uh, I was when I was researching to do this study, and uh, I was looking for many different things anyway, and then I don't look uh, only spiritual or inside the, the spiritist doctrine. And I got to watch a video uh, from a pastor. Uh, I don't remember his name now, but it was really nice. And then uh, 11 minutes maybe that he was talking about the poor in spirit, the poor in spirit, about this beatitude. And then he brought me to my attention, he brought to my attention C.S. Lewis, that you guys probably know, the most uh, known you know, book of his is like the Chronicles of Narnia. But he has many different books. And then this pastor brought this book, which is The Great Divorce. It is called The Great Divorce. So you guys know this book? You should. Because this guy, C.S. Lewis, is a spiritist. He's kind of following the spiritism all, all time long, probably. He has many different different books. And then one passage of this book, and that's what, you know, catch, catch me the attention, because this book is about a buzz. I mean, people live, you know, some people live in the hell, and the original, the original uh, title of the book was Going Back Home or Going, Who's Going Home? But it, was, it wasn't commercial enough, so, they change the name to The Great Divorce. But it's based on, uh, on some uh, poem, and I don't remember the, the poet, do you remember? I don't remember, but it's like a poem where the, the, it is the divorce between heaven and hell, and that's when they become two different things, when they get divorced. 
it's really interesting. And then it is about some spirits, you know, they call ghosts and they live in this, in this hell, which is a gray town, always raining, blah, blah, blah. And then they get a bus stop. And then people start, you know, gathering this bus stop, this bus station, because they say that, you know, there is a bus that is going to heaven. And they get, to, you know, get together in this, in this bus station. Some uh, don't want to wait because it takes too long, and some stays. And then those people who, you know, those ghosts who can, you know, force themselves and stay there, they get to the bus, the bus starts flying, and the bus goes to heaven, and they arrive to heaven, and then they get out of the bus, and they got, they got to meet people that they knew in their lives, you know, different people. But they knew those people. And then each one of these people has a different problem, a different situation. Like we have many different ones. We have the, the, uh, the spouse who demands on to the, the husband, the loving mother, which was like, you know, he, she was loving the, the, her, his son a lot, but he, he, and then she died because, you know, after she, anyway, she lost the son, and then she suffered, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, many different ones, many different flaws, many different weaknesses, okay, among them. And then he gets one, one example, which is uh, one uh, owner of a store, of a shop, and then he gets to encounter the, the murder of his friend. And then he, when he gets in front of this murder, he says, what the hell are you doing here in heaven? You're a murderer. What are you doing here? And he was like, no, I'm here because, you know, that's the way it is. No, no, it's not possible. How come you're here? Because, you know, I'm way better than you. I was, I was like the right person. I was doing the right things. I was, you know, paying for everything that I, 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 I had. And then I was like going to church and I was going this, 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 this. And then he goes through a bunch of things that he was doing right. So I won my rights. You're not supposed to be here. And then the guy says, like, they, they called ghosts. And they, by coincidence, the others in heaven are called spirits in the book just to make the difference between heaven and hell. And then the, the, the other guy, the murderer, right? The, the, and, but that's exactly why. But how come you, you are so peaceful like that? Because, you know, you, how about the, our friend that was like cold, but he's not cold anymore. He's here, he wants to meet you. No, that's not possible. That's not possible. No, I'm here because I wanna help you. Because be, before killing that guy, our friend, I have killed you in my heart for so long before. So I'm here, I was sent to you to help you. I was sent to you to stay with you and to be your slave if you want. I can do whatever you want. I can help you throughout the, way, uh, the ways of heaven. I can carry you on my back if you want, if you get tired. I can do anything for you. And then he was, of course not, I'm not gonna be here. I'm not gonna stay here in the same place as you because I'm better than you. Look at that. The guy was sent to heaven in a bus, and then he, no, I'm not gonna stay here in heaven. Hell no, he says. <laughs> I'm, gonna not, I'm not gonna stay here with you. You are, you are a, a murderer. And I'm not gonna stay in the same place as you. But it's heaven, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna stay here. Pride. And that was so unbelievably beautiful that I thought, you know, I just, I changed this, you know, like half hour ago, by the way, not half hour, but an hour ago when I got in. And I brought the book to you guys, because, you know, we have to read this book, each one of us. You can go online, you have the YouTube, you can listen to it, you can get the PDF online, you don't need to buy the book if you don't want it. But it's beautiful, because, you know, and I, of course, and I am this way, I listen to seven or eight passages already about the, the book itself in the YouTube and then, you know, that's only today because I got this in the morning because I was driving <laughs> to work and then I got this. It is unbelievable, but that's, that's the beauty of it. It's pride. The guy was in heaven. The, the guy was being given everything to get better, like us, like each one of us every day. We have the opportunities to be happy. We have everything that God, in his merciful way, he gives us every single opportunity to be happy. 
to learn, to walk, to evolve. And sometimes we're just blind, we don't want it. Sometimes we just know, I don't want to be in this place. And then he's going to be there, he's going to give again the same opportunities tomorrow. Hoping that we can see a little bit better tomorrow. He's patient. He's merciful. He's love. He is only love. He's waiting for us to accept his love. That's it. Right? So just to finish it up, with our humility we build virtu virtues that we do not have. If we're not humble, we are building fake us as if we had clothes to hide the formities in of our body. And we have to be really, in a good way, proud of our deformities, proud of our mistakes, proud of our flaws, and ask for help so we can get better every time. Ask here, ask on your side, ask at home, ask when you Put yourself, you know, your head on the pillow, in the pillow, and then you ask for help. Ask for God. Ask for the spirits. Ask for whoever you want to ask. But ask for God's sake. Don't do like the guy in heaven from the book that he says, I'm not going to ask for any bloody chari charity from anyone. Neither you. I'm not going to ask for any charity. And then the spirit says to him, please ask. That's the only way you can get things. And then he goes away. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>